Hello, hello, beautiful people. Welcome to my page, to my channel. This is Tanika Maria, all about getting real and being healed. This is the place for high achieving women of purpose, women of faith who are really serious, really, really serious about getting real, being healed, and just being emotionally healthy and emotionally safe for relationships, for purpose, for marriage, in just everything in life in general. And I'm out here live, but I intended to just post this video and to keep pressing forward so that I could continue my candid conversations about my journey on the road to 50 and what it took for me, the different obstacles. And I'm hoping and praying that this testimony and what I'm about to share will encourage you on your journey. So this is part one of what it took for me to heal from a broken engagement. And so, and I'm going to share in part two, I have a couple of more things to share, but right now I'm just going to share the top three things that I really needed to do that really sort of jump-started the process of getting over a broken engagement. And so number one, I'll dive right in. And as you're coming in, as you listen, as you may come back and catch the replay, definitely comment and let me know where you are in the journey or how these three things resonated with you when you had to end a relationship, end a marriage. What of these three things resonated with you? What have you struggled with? What have you had to do? So number one, the first thing in this whole process, and this time last year, let me tell you, this time last year, it was beginning to unravel. This time, about September, this week of September 15th, 16th, 17th, it was starting. I kid you not. That's right. And it, I, I want to say that September 20th was when it finally ended, when that was the day that, okay, this is over. This is absolutely 100% over. And so one of the first steps I took after the initial conversations, after that first week and really getting settled was initiate a period. This is point number one, if you're taking notes, of no contact. No contact. I needed this time to get myself together and get away from the source of pain. How can you heal right when you're still connected with the source of your pain? So number one, this is about what it took for me to get over a broken engagement. And you can take these same principles and apply it to getting over or getting through any type of situation where you've been hurt, where you've been uh, betrayed, where things have happened, any kind of situational relationship dynamic, especially in the area of romantic relationships, marriage, divorce. Number one, I had to establish no contact. I had to get away from the source of the pain. And this is hard when you've been talking to someone on a daily basis. You spent extended time with them and now you suddenly disconnect. But this allows you to get closure for yourself, right? It allows you to see things more objectively and move on. And it puts you in the driver's seat. You're imposing a limitation upon yourself by not initiating contact, by not continuing to text. Not This is no texting, no calling, no direct messaging, no inboxing, no sending messages through family and friends. This is a self-imposed like no contact. And this is what helped me, right? And so the reality is by letting someone have the same level of access to you that they did before the engagement, what, and, and they're still you're still communicating and acting the same way, still talking every day, still texting and carrying on like you're in a relationship, how, how are they going to treat you any better? If it wasn't working while you were in communication, how are, will their behavior towards you change if you still are communicating? So what am I saying? If someone has the same level of access to you that they have already always experienced, then why do you think they're going to adjust and change now that you've broken up? So you know, why should they change their, their behavior? And the second reason why we want to continue the no contact and why it helped me is it gave me a chance to really grieve, to, to come to that place of acceptance. And if you're still communicating and carrying on, you're just prolonging that grieving process. And remember, closure does not lie with the other person. 
it lies with you. And it's not about them acknowledging what they did wrong or acknowledging this or, you know, having some type of remorse and coming back on bended knee. It's beyond all of that. You have to make, you have to accept the reality for, of that relationship for what it was, not what you wanted it to be, and have your own closure and move forward. No contact. This was really important for me. It allows you to maintain your dignity. Nothing worse than chasing and texting and blowing up the phone from somebody for somebody that clearly does not appreciate or want a relationship with you. So if you're when, when establishing that no contact is so critical because it allows you to keep your sense of dignity. And as a child of God, as a woman or a man of God, you must uh, keep your dignity at all times. So number one, what it took for me to heal over uh, to move on after a broken engagement was number one, no contact. Number two, Number two, I had to face some pretty hard truths. And this is really important because if you don't face the truth, you're going to repeat it again. You're going to attract the same dynamic and the same situation again. So I realized, so I had to face the hard truth that I thought, I thought that I had surrendered the relationship to God. But in reality, I had not. I had to face the truth that from Jump Street, before really saying yes to going exclusive in terms of the dating, that I began, I saw a red flag. Hear me well. That was a hard truth that I had to face. And I realized that up until the point of the proposal that God was giving, there were warning bells. There were little warning bells, uh, 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 little checks, ding, 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 in the spirit that I overlooked. And then I had to accept the fact, why? Why? Because you always want to believe the best. When, when everything else is looking good and everything else is consistent and everything else is on all four cylinders, it's like extending grace. Like I'm a human, I make mistakes. And we just want to be loved and to love. We want things to work, right? So I had to face that truth about myself. And so the warning bell went off several times before he proposed and I kept pushing it away. Of course, kind of thinking, okay, it's just me being paranoid. It's me being anxious, uh, you know, getting all worked up for nothing. And what is, but I couldn't shake it, you guys. Hear me well. Part of ending and, and getting over a broken engagement, a broken relationship is number two, facing the hard truth. And coming to that painful realization that I contributed to the whole situation by not really being honest from the very beginning. This is a hard truth that you have to face and come to. This is how you really get real and be healed. And so you have to look at your own role in the situation, in the demise of it and how it was created to start with. And that leads to the third point and I'm done. I just wanted to drop this. This is the journey. I'm on the road to 55. And I wanted to share what where I was this time last year and where God has me today and how I got to the place of healing. And so my, my hope for you is that you get to your place of healing as well. So number three, and then I'll come out of here again and I'll drop two more. I had to get a better understanding of what unhealed and what unaware part of me attracted the situation and allowed it. How did I really get to that? And let me tell you, I, in my own personal situation, and you can look at, you know, for yourself, but being in a place of transition, I had I recently sold a house, moved out of the house, moved into an apartment while it was being fixed up, sold it, Stayed in an apartment, you know, for about nine months, bought a new house. My son had graduated. So I had some feelings, uh, feelings of coming into middle age, new seasons, my son graduating, being alone. So there was this mix of joy, mix of being alone, selling the houses, move, all these moving two times in, in like a very short period of time, very stressful. Had a lot of stress on my corporate job. I'm still a corporate full-time accountant. And the company had just gone through another acquisition. And at one point, I was the only one man band in the revenue department. I work in revenue. And so it was me. It was just Tanika doing it all right. 
And so I had all of that going on. And on top of that, I had the nerve to write a second book and to publish a second book, which was wonderful. So I had lots of good things, lots of activity, lots of transition, but I was also burnt out. I was in transition and I was at a place of sort of burnout and I, it, was, it, was, it was good things, all good. But instead of taking that time to really pause, to really reflect and catch myself and kind of catch my breath, being a human, I distract myself with dating. Come on, we have to be honest. So number three, if you want to know what it takes to really get real and be healed, this is what I did to get over a broken engagement. I had to realize what and get to the bottom of what kind of got me into the dynamic and still, still hold space for grace for myself, right? And so my question to you is, and you can put this in the comments, those of you who may catch the replay on this, what revelations and truths about yourself did you face in your healing process? And this could be from a relationship breakup, a broken engagement, things that happen in family, in ministry, in business. And remember, this is not a reflection to go inward in shame and regret and looking back, but this is just so you can learn the lesson and move forward forward, right? And so I hope this has been helpful. And what I want you to do is just simply comment and let me know which one of these three have you had the hardest time with as you've healed in your process. Has it been not been not being able to maintain no contact? You're still engaging and communicating and it's making you, you know, it's not better. Or number two, facing the truth about what really happened and your role in it. And understanding number three, how you got there, what part of you, how you got there. Has that been difficult for you? So again, my name is Tanika Maria. Definitely check out the link in my bio and in my notes on here for ways to connect and the five unconscious ways we block love, which has a lot to do with how we're healing up from our past. I look forward to hearing from you. Talk to you soon and catch me again for part two of what it took for me to heal from a broken engagement. Take care and talk to you soon.